here with the bull case for stocks, Ed Yardeni of Yardeni Research. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Thank you, Scott. So I just read what Marco Kalanovic over at J.P. Morgan said, and yeah, I just want I you to address two things. Rates yep. are high and restrictive and valuations expensive. Disagree? Well, the bond yield is actually back to where it was before the uh, great financial crisis. You know, we had this great abnormal environment uh, between the great financial crisis and the great virus crisis. And now the bond yield uh, was trading around four and a half percent, five percent in 2003, 2004, 2005 and 2006. So I think we're back to normal. We've normalized uh, the bond yield in the past three years and the economy has withstood it remarkably well. So. I'm not convinced that the economy, uh, I think the economy itself is showing that it's resilient. So from that perspective, I'm not convinced that uh, these rates are going to crush the economy. So uh, that was in part of what one of the guests just said as well. And, you know, we, we're back to normal. I, I'll give you that. Five percent, okay. as I said, like five minutes ago, is it's not like it's the end of the world. But exactly. Ed, we, we were at zero forever. OK, theoretically yeah. ever, you know. Right. And now we're at five percent. That's a jarring transition to do in Absolutely. a reasonably short period of time. So I think yeah. it's un it's somewhat unfair to just say, well, we're back to normal because 5% is right. where we were before the financial crisis. No, it's a very good point, Scott. Uh, I've been arguing that the economy is in a recession. I've been making that argument since the beginning of last year. I've been calling it a rolling recession. And certainly the surge in mortgage rate uh, certainly has created a recession in the housing market. But to be more exact, it's, it was a recession in the single family housing market. And now that actually looks like it's bottoming as the multifamily housing market's taken a dive because rent inflation has come down a lot, which is great for the inflation outlook. But I tell you, Scott, the, uh, th these rates are going to kill a lot of projects in, in the commercial real estate market. Uh, we have uh, uh, people who are in that marketplace as, as accounts uh, managing distressed asset funds. And on the one hand, they're very happy to see all these distressed assets that uh, offer great opportunities for them to turn around. On the other hand, they own some of these uh, assets that they bought uh, with uh, record low interest rates. So now as they have to refinance them, the math just doesn't work. So I, I agree there are problems out there. And I'm not saying that uh, everything is hunky-dory. I, mean, I am saying that the economy on balance has been remarkably resilient. Sure, but you just mentioned, you know, you tick through where we've seen recessions and in, in what, you yeah. know, okay, give you that, you know, rolling recessions. We, we can understand that concept, but there yeah. hasn't been a recession in what is, I think, without question, the most important area of the economy, right? And that's the consumer economy. Consumer. Now, yeah. what happens if that, that, that happens, right? The consumer, well, do, that do happens, you actually believe yeah. that the consumer can hang on to the degree that it has? Well, you know, you, you mentioned uh, some of the... Uh, headwinds that the consumers is facing the, the student loan issue of course is is, is a a big issue and uh, so-called excess saving uh, i think what's been missing in the discussion here is that there's still a lot of assets that, that have been accumulated since the um, beginning of the pandemic you know that uh, the net worth of the household sector is up to 150 trillion dollars all time 155 trillion dollars all-time record high and scott half of that is held by baby boomers Many of them are retiring, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to spend that. So you talk about excess savings. The baby boomers have saved for retirement, and they have a lot of money to spend. You believe earnings estimates are where they should be for not only the remainder of this year, Ed, but as we turn the calendar, which is not that far away, into 2024? Well, Scott, I've, I've been at the high end uh, of uh, strategists and uh, kind of more consistent with the analysts recognizing that the analysts have a tendency to be too optimistic. Uh, but I'm expecting, actually, that this year is going to be 225. The analysts are expecting 220. Other strategists have been expecting much less, some at 185. Uh, for next year, I'm forecasting 250. The analysts are forecasting 245. Uh, analysts have recently been actually raising their estimates. Uh, looks like the profit margin has turned. Looks like things are actually getting better on the profits recession, which was all due to a, a shrinkage of the profit margin, I think the profit margin is starting to improve. But, so but, I that think we're says, have, but yeah. that's, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that says unequivocally that you believe that the economy is not going to slow any more than it already has shown that it, that it might. In, in fact, you, you can't believe that if you have no. even more optimistic earnings projections than the street. 
Well, uh, just because my numbers are more optimistic doesn't mean that's not consistent with an economy that's growing. I, I do think the economy is going to be growing next no, year. No, that's my point. You, that's my yeah, point. Yeah, you, you, like, yeah. you can't possibly believe that. Uh, forget recession. That Forget that. <laughs> but you, you can't possibly believe that the economy is, is going to slow at all from here forward if you have those lofty of projections. Correct. That, I guess that's my yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, quarter to quarter, there can be volatility. But, yes, I'm expecting that the economy will continue to grow through year-end. I don't expect it's going to keep up uh, what we saw in the in the third quarter, which looks like it's going to be 4 to 5% real GDP growth. Uh, maybe maybe we'll get something less than that. I'm sure we'll get something less than that in the fourth quarter, especially if the auto strike uh, lasts a while. I mean, I can't dismiss the possibility there will be a negative quarter in the fourth quarter if the auto strike lasts uh, th through the end of the year. Uh, but that's not what I'm anticipating. I'm expecting that there will be a settlement. But going into next year, I think next year will be a growth year. I think the consumer will, will continue to have employment gains. I think real wages will be increasing. Uh, I, I really think that the, the big kind of secret uh, sauce in this whole thing is going to turn out to be productivity. I see evidence that productivity is starting to make a comeback. And I think it continues to make a comeback into next year and the following year. So, yeah, I think productivity is going to turn out to be what gives us uh, better than expected growth, better expected profits, and real wage gains.